the laser the key to expanding the horizons of home entertainment meet the new center of your optical disc library the pioneer CLD 2070 laser disc player this unit plays all formats all sizes and is surprisingly affordable especially if you have access to eBay or a thrift store near your house let me show you which discs this unit will play first we have a CD3 or a CD single that fits into the very center of this drawer next we have a CD video or a CDV which contains both video and audio there's a special slot in the drawer especially for that audio CDs just like this one this sound sensation CD containing today's top hits fits into the same slot in the drawer then we have an 8 inch laser disc not very common but still available a special slot especially just for that disc and finally laser discs and disco division discs can be played in the largest portion of the drawer of this amazing video disc playing system now let's get into the features of the CLD 2070 Pioneer LaserDisc player. The features of the CLD 2070 include both side playback. You can play side A or side B of your LaserDiscs. Has a program capability, random play, auto program editing, clear, file, display, intro scan, CX noise reduction on and off, TV laser disc player selector switch, repeat A and repeat B to repeat a particular section of a video that you'd like to see over and over again. Over here we have a keypad where we have direct search so you can directly access frames of video, tracks, or chapters depending upon the disc that you are playing. The front display panel offers a wide array of information pertaining to the discs that you currently are playing. You have chapter or track, hours, minutes, and seconds displayed here. You also have a calendar for all of the tracks or chapters for both sides of the disc. Notice we have side A on the left side, side B on the right. You also have a digital sound indicator to indicate whether the disc, the laser disc, has digital sound. And of course, over here to your left, it indicates that it plays CD video, compact discs, and laser discs. The back panel indicates that it was made in Japan and manufactured in July of 1989. It has an optical digital output, which would allow you to play DTS 5.1 channel laser discs through the system. It also has composite video output, RCA jacks for standard left and right audio output, a control in and out to connect other components to control them electronically. You also have an antenna input and a video output, as well as a channel selector for channels three or four for playback through the coaxial antenna output. Now you may be asking why choose the CLD 2070 over other LaserDisc players? Well, there's three things that I really liked about this model. First, the, the drawer mechanism right here in the front is completely covered by this display panel and control panel, almost making it look like a stereo receiver versus a LaserDisc player. I also like the fact that the unit doesn't sit up very high. It's kind of slender in the front, and most LaserDisc players sit up about this tall versus this one. The next thing I liked is the fact that it plays both sides A and B automatically, also known as auto reverse. I am going to pop the hood on this here in a moment and show you how that mechanism works. It's really cool. The third thing that I liked about this unit is the fact that it has an optical digital output, which as I mentioned earlier, allows you to play DTS laser discs without any other special receivers or decoders. The AC3 playback on LaserDisc requires a special LaserDisc player 
a special laser disc, and a special receiver, all three. This particular one, if you find DTS movies, you can just play them right through your 5.1 channel optical input on your receiver. So let's get started at looking at the inside of this unit and how I got it working. Because when it arrived from eBay, although in excellent physical condition, the unit would not open the drawer. And my first thought was, oh, it's a belt. All I got to do is replace the belt. Well, it didn't up, end up being the belt. I'll show you what it was. Quickly though, let's look at some dimensions. The unit sits up approximately five and a quarter inches high from the table. It is 16 and a half inches wide and it is 18 inches deep. Removing the top panel involves removing about seven screws from the outside. And once you have the lid off, you'll notice inside that we have these gigantic circuit boards and I can remove these screws here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and these boards will come out and allow you to kind of see more of what's going on with the mechanism inside. There's a couple of screws. I believe there's three on the back of the unit here. Take those screws out and slide this forward. And then you can kind of bend this around because it has a cable over there. And we just kind of prop it in there. There we go. All right. So that allows you to see what's going on on the inside. Your laser mechanism is inside of here. And then you've got a a stepper unit here that takes the laser mechanism and turns it around and flips it around to the top of the disc, which is really cool. I'll show you that here momentarily. So what was wrong with the unit and how did I fix it? Well, the unit has a series of gears that are located on the underside of the drawer. In order to access those gears, you'll need to remove screws across the top here. There's this one, this one, this one, and this one. So four of them right there. And once you do that, you can pull off this front bezel and then underneath the drawer is a set of gears and all of those gears had grease on them that had seized up over the years. So all the gears had to be removed, cleaned, re-lubricated, and then reinserted into the player. And by doing that, the motor was freed up and allowed to move around. So let's take a look inside and see what's going on with this laser and how it works with the dual sided play. The unit had a black plastic cover covering up this part right here that normally you would not see by looking down inside the laser disc player. But you can see here, this is the drive belt for the drawer and it has a, uh, I guess a threaded belt there. It has a, has gears on it, which is actually pretty cool versus your standard old black rubber belts. So again, that part that it's connecting to there is what I had to remove and clean. Now let's take a look at this mechanism and stuff in here. This thing is really sophisticated and cool. So here is your laser mechanism here. And what it does is it has two stages. So once you put a disc in, the laser will go up and take a look to see if it sees a CD. Well, actually it looks for a laser disc first. If it doesn't see a laser disc, then it goes in a little bit more and it looks for a CD. And then if it doesn't see either one of those, then it's done and the end of that program. But look at this uh, little playback shoot here. So the, the, uh, the laser goes over here into this thing here, flips it over and plays side B. That is really crazy. And sorry, I'm having to turn the camera sideways to get it down inside of here so you can see it, but it's really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and play a eight inch disc just so you can see how quickly it does this. So I'm going to hit the play button and it will load the disc into play. Okay. It immediately recognized that it's a laser disc and started spinning. Now let's go ahead and do the dual sided play. I'll hit side B. Now, for whatever reason, it decided it didn't want to play side B of this disc. I don't know if it's because it doesn't have anything on it. I think that uh, originally it, uh, 
it, well, it says here on the label that the, the content is only on side A of the disc. Uh, that's kind of strange. All right, let's try it with a full-size disc and see what it does, since it's kind of cool to watch anyway. All right, I've got my DiscoVision disc in here. Go ahead and insert the disc. Okay, I'm happy with side A. Now I'm gonna to go to side B, pressing the side B button on the front. Notice the disc has already spun up the other direction. And the laser is now reading the top of the disc versus the bottom. It looks like it might be having a little trouble reading the disc because I'm allowing so much light inside of here. And there's light ref refracting off of everything. But anyway, it gives you an idea of this groovy mechanism, which I'll go ahead and hit stop on. positively insane, right? Now what's really crazy is the CD video disc, CDV disc that I have, spins really fast for a small disc because it has to spin as fast as a laser disc, not a regular CD. So let's throw that in and see what that looks like. So again, a CDV contains 20 minutes of digital audio as well as about six minutes of, well, analog video, laser disc video. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this disc in and you'll see that the unit runs a little program to determine what kind of disc is in there. So first it'll look and say, oh, is there a laser disc? Nope, don't see anything out there. Oh, look, there is a CD. Wait, no, it's a CDV. With a CDV, you can hear that noise. The unit has to spin it really fast. And I can go onto my front panel here and you'll see that it's playing a CDV track three and the unit is going crazy so let's go ahead and hit stop and eject so I'm going to go ahead and hit side two on a disc that's spinning currently How about that? And we'll flip it back over to side A. There's the disc spinning right there. And I'll go ahead and hit stop on it so you can see how that looks. And we'll go ahead and eject the disc. And you can see the dual purpose spindle there in the middle that handles both laser discs and CDs. Taking a look underneath one of these boards here shows that uh, there's a Toshiba chip on here. Do you see that? There's one that says Pioneer. And then there's an entire section here that has no circuitry on it. It's just a printed board without the option there. So perhaps this is for a model that would have a digital still or a maybe a TBC in this area, perhaps that is entirely possible. Uh, let's look at the other board on the other side. You'll notice that there is actually, yeah, it's not on this side. There's a uh, couple of Pioneer chips right there. And again, another Pioneer chip right there. 
there's actually a Sony chip on the other side of this board, which is really crazy. And then you've got uh, your RF section down in here, and probably circuitry that supports the laser servo functioning down in this area, because you can see that big ribbon cable that comes off of the servo mechanism right there. Here's a shot of that Sony chip I mentioned earlier. So I'm often asked why I don't play the particular player that I am demoing through my camera so that you can see the video quality of it. The reason I don't do that for the most part is because I use an iPhone as my camera, so I don't really have a way to hook it into the camera. But I do have a way of capturing video, so what I'm gonna do as we leave you today in this video is I'm going to feature some of this video disc, Laser Optics 2, which I was kind of mocking at the beginning. I'll play you some of that, and it'll be a direct connect to the camera, to you, so you can see the video quality of this machine. Also, I wanted to ask you to watch out for a review of this. This is a Micus Home RTX 2.0. It is a long range wireless audio transmitter or receiver. So this will actually re uh, send Bluetooth audio or receive Bluetooth audio, depending on which purpose you have it for. And it does it in a long range way. I just got that today. So look for that in a new video coming up. All right. So let's go ahead and throw in Laser Optics 2. And you guys can see the absolute awesomeness of one of the best looking laser discs I've ever seen. And it probably has the best quality of a laser disc I've ever seen. I've actually got a little clip of this already on my channel, but uh, I'll show you a little bit more of it up close without having to actually look at the screen. Let me uh, scan forward here a little bit. So there's your all formats, all sizes, surprisingly affordable piece right there. All right, I'll cue that up for you now. HDTV, IDTV, XYZ TV. It all sounds so confusing and so far away. But if you want a much better picture, digital sound, and thousands of great music and movie titles, you can get it today. The almost indestructible disc produces an image that is sharper, clearer, and cleaner than anything you have ever experienced in your home. Incredible detail and three-dimensional impact. Subtle shades of black. Vivid colors. Pure whites. So don't wait until the next century to get better video. You don't even have to throw away your existing system. Just add a Pioneer laser disc and you'll get the sharpest picture the purest sound and the hottest entertainment to choose from. Pioneer LaserDisc. It's the best show in town. If you already listen to CD audio, you know you won't settle for anything less. Then why accept less from your video system? Man, I can't believe this. With Pioneer LaserDisc technology, you can get the same purity, the same range, the same dynamics, the same digital audio perfection as CDs. The subtlest acoustic details come through sharp and clear. The hottest action crashes through your living room. Watching video is great in digital stereo, but if you really want to crank up the adrenaline, hook up a Pioneer digital surround sound system. It's better sound than at the movies. The sharpest picture. The purest sound. 
and the hottest entertainment to choose from. Pioneer Laserdisc. It's the best show in town.